Welcome back. This is Larry Benko, W0QE, and this video is a look at what are the differences between standing wave ratio, which is also known as SWR, and return loss. Is one better than the other? Sim Smith plots SWR easily throughout a circuit, and return loss is not featured prominently in Sim Smith. We can do this by using Sim Smith to help us display both as an example and come to our own conclusions as to which is better for your use. Starting with a new SimSmith circuit, let's sweep the value of the load resistance here by adding the field to the sweep menu and enabling it. And let's sweep from 1 ohm to say 2500 ohms. Let's do it and say I don't know, maybe say 201 steps. The reason I'm doing it in, a, in an odd number of steps is so I get the center point um, to be an actual steps, step in the process. That'll be good enough. And let's go over to the square chart and look and see what we have. What we have here on the blue trace is a plot of SWR. It goes from 50 to 1 when it's 1 ohm it goes to 50 to 50 to 1 when it's 2500 ohms and it's a 1 to 1 SWR at 50 ohms. Just what you'd expect. Sim Smith plots that very easily and very nicely. Now, let's see what we can do to get Sim Smith to plot return loss. If we look in any book that has RF topics in it, these kind of formulas appear all the time. The first formula that appears is a formula for gamma. Gamma is basically the plot of the Smith chart. And gamma, if we treat gamma as a polar number with a magnitude and a phase angle, and we do this math, these are complex numbers, and convert it to polar form and just put, put a dot out there, you know, we're, we're done. And that's, that's, we, we plot it. And Sim Smith does that, does that all the time. In the process of doing that, gamma becomes the complex reflection coefficient. And it, Really, it's it's reflection coefficient, but there really may not even be a reflection in your circuit. But if there is a transmission line, it is the reflection coefficient. But in a case where it's just a fixed impedance, like in this case, there's no reflection in this circuit at all. There's no delay in it. But the, it, the math still works. We have a we have we have rho, which is reflection coefficient, which is just the magnitude of gamma, which is just the diameter. Whatever we put a point here, this has a a reflection coefficient, which is the magnitude right here. It's 0 0.480. So that would have rho of 0 0.480, and it'd be at 127 degrees. But if we want just the magnitude of um, gamma, it's just 0 0.480. So what we want to do is convert this number into rho. And then SWR is just 1 plus rho over 1 minus rho. Return loss is defined as minus 20 log to the base 10 of rho. And if you want mismatch loss, which is something I've done before, and SimSmith calculates that also, um, it's minus 10 log to the base 10 of 1 minus rho squared. These formulas are derived and they're discussed in many texts. Uh, they're also in the ARRL handbook. Um, you know, there are lots of places. So let, let's just make Sim Smith do this work for us. It's already done this work right here. Uh, it does that very easily by just clicking on it, on, on just SWR and where you want SWR to be. Um, in this case, it's only two components. The only place we can measure SWR is right here in the middle between the two. So let's go to the plot menu we're going to plot some stuff. The first thing let's plot is let's use a new feature. Now SimSmith, I'm using 16.5Y uh, on the website is 16.5X and 16.5X Sim, and has this new feature. And this new feature is a function which plots our return loss. It saved me a little time here. I'm just going to copy it over. So what we're going to do is we're going to plot RL. RL is a new function. And where are we going to look for this RL? We're going to look at it at g.zn. Zn is on the left side of the component. That's something I've mentioned in, in, in at least one video so far. But if I put a component in here, um, we have an interface here. At this point right here, this is G, right here at this line is g.zn, which is the left side of the component. It's also c1.z. 
The left side is C1 is C1.ZN, and it's also L.Z. Right, we can use either one of them. The advantage of doing G.ZN is G always stays fixed, no matter what component I put here. Sometimes it may be an R, maybe an L, maybe a C, maybe C1, whatever. G always stays fixed. We can change G, but if you don't change it manually, it stays fixed. So this plots this return loss function. Now, one new feature in SimSmith here is you don't have to even tell it where to plot it, where to find, where to find this um, impedance. It assumes, if you don't tell it, it assumes it's right here. I don't like doing that, and even though that's allowed in SimSmith, I will not use it in videos I do. And the reason I, won't, I don't like it is very simply because if I forget what it means, I, I don't know what I'm doing here. This always tells me where I'm looking. So, but nevertheless, they're exactly the same. So what we see if we do that is we see this graph now with this on axis Y2, which is this is axis Y2 over here. We see in, we have a heading of dB because this now is going to be in dB. And it, it goes from about 0 or 0.3 dB for return loss up to something in excess of 50, excess of 90, excess it goes up to 300. That's that's absurd. 300 dB, um, the difference between the forward and reflected power. That's I mean there that's that's insanity. Uh, we could have capped it somewhere lower than that. In reality, you'll never see a circuit that does that. Um, by the time you get to 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 45 or 50 to 50 dB, your SWR is 1.00 something. But this is this graph. And this graph show exactly the same thing. They show it in different ways, but they show they're a measure of how well the match is to the generator. And that's all they are. If you like SWR, then you use this one. If you like return loss, you use this one. Now there's reasons for using return loss, but um, SWR has been around for a longer period of time. SWR goes back to the 1880s before RF was even. Uh, known about uh, in the process of um, trying to debug some of the telegraphy lines in the United States and in England, uh, a, a British mathematician, Oliver Heaviside, uh, figured some of this stuff out um, because it, the telegraph lines look like transmission lines. Uh, even though the frequencies were very, very low, the telegraph signals, the lines were very, very long and you could still, and you could have standing waves on those lines. So. Here's return loss. Now, if you don't download the new version of SimSmith and you want to just print uh, the return loss itself, um, calculation-wise, we can do that one of a couple different ways. I'm going to do it in two steps here. Now, what I'm going to do is declare a local variable called rho, which is this rho right here, and it's the magnitude of gamma of g.zn. And then I'm going to plot rho RL as minus 20 log times rho. And that's exactly what the formula said to do. So if I plot this, I get exactly the same answer as I had up here. Now this one was not labeled, so it took the function in here and used it as a label. This one was labeled RL, so it's, it's here. If I turn this one on, it's going to be right on top of this one. And it is. So this is how you used to do it if you needed to plot it. You could have put magnitude of gamma down here. I wanted to calculate rho, and I wanted to keep it around because I wanted to use it for the mismatch loss function too. But um, while we're at it now, let me just plot two more things. Let's plot rho itself, and let's plot mismatch loss. So this, this graph is getting a little bit messy. Um, Let's turn off this one and turn on the pink one so they're all four different colors. And let's put some, take this, take this graph right, or take this uh, sheet right here and get rid of it now. And let's put some labels on this, uh, on these curves. And the reason to, to label them is so that we can keep track of them. Uh, you, don't ha you don't have to do that, but... Um, I want that one on, and I'm just going to put the value where I want it. I'm just going to do it at a 10 to 1 SWR. It really doesn't matter where I'm doing it. I'm just doing it somewhere to, 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 to force it to be able to um, – 
And then the last one is mismatch loss. Okay, now they're all lined up at 500 ohms. They're all, they're all on a 10 to 1 SWR. And what I've done here is plotted, I calculated rho as the, as the magnitude of gamma, which our formula showed to do, and I plotted return loss as minus 20 log to the base 10 of rho, or this function does exactly this math right here. And then I plotted rho itself. Rho goes from 0 to 1, basically. And then I plotted mismatch loss, and mismatch loss is a dB number. It goes from 0 up to some value when the SWR gets high. And it's, it's the it's the opportunity that the generator had to produce power, but due to the fact that the load is of the wrong impedance, it couldn't produce that power into the load. It doesn't represent uh, any kind of heating, heating or anything like that. It's just, an, it's like, like I said, it's an opportunity, opportunity that's lost. Now we can take very quickly a program, um, such as like this little SWR calculator, and we can put a standing wave ratio of 10 to 1 in here. And I can look at the numbers. It says that a 10 to 1 SWR, it's a reflection coefficient of 0.818. There it is, 0.818. It says the return loss is 1.743, 1.743 dB. And it says the mismatch loss is 4.807. And there we are, 4.807 dB. So SimSmith calculates exactly, exactly what you'd expect it to calculate. Now, if I look at this curve and I'd say, well, are you done yet? Well, the answer is, yeah, I can be done. Um, but there's something that doesn't sit well. And that is, if I look at the value here of where we see the best match, it seems like it makes more sense if it's a number that's low, not a number that's, that peaks. And if we use uh, return uh, reflection coefficient, it's, it, turn, it goes to zero down here. We use SWR, it goes to one down here. But this, this graph goes out of sight the other way. What a lot of people do is they don't plot return loss. They plot something else. They plot the negative of it. And we can make, make SimSmith do that by just putting a minus in front of there and getting rid of the minus there. And now both of our graphs will look like this. The dB scale now needs to be moved up. Need to change mismatch loss too. And we move all those up to here. And what we see is mismatch loss of zero. And it gets, and we see, loss, we, see, we see excess mismatch loss, even though it's shown as a negative number. That doesn't bother me too much. So let's just get rid of that one. But I do like this going down to, down to a low number. Now it goes way past zero down here. With zero on this on the bottom of the axis, it goes it goes much larger than that as we saw before. But it goes to a low value when when the match is good. Now a lot of people will plot um, return loss like this, and they'll call it return loss. This is not return loss. Return loss means the number has to be positive because it's we know the signal that gets returned if there's a reflection is less than the signal that goes out. So there has to be some something returned, and that means the loss has to be positive. It's not a negative loss. Negative loss implies gain in the circuit. So um, let me show a couple graphs here. Okay, here are three graphs that I just went out to the web and did a search on return loss plots. And these are representative of what, the, what you get. The top one up here is just absolutely incorrect. It says return loss. It shows these as negative values. This is just plain and simple, outright wrong, yet you see this all the time. Um, you just have to remember that return loss is not negative, it's positive. These, it's plotted this way um, just because it, this, this graphing program may not have been able to turn the scales around or the guy didn't know, know any better or whatever. This one here is plotted wrong also. And this doesn't say return loss, this says loss. So if we, I don't, I don't know, it, 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 this, one's, this one's better. This one here is actually correct. This one says S11 measurement. S11 in a network analyzer is a plot of reflection coefficient or gamma. And um, if you plot that on a log scale, that becomes log of 
reflection coefficient, which is exactly what um, return loss isn't. Return loss is negative lo um, loss of that, but by just saying it's just S11 or log magnitude of S11 is actually better, we get a graph that looks like this. Now the beauty of this is the graph goes from 0 dB down to a negative value, and this is, a, this is some filter which obviously has loss in the filter. This is the passband SWR, but these both appear in the same graphing space with the same one axis on the left-hand side. That is one of the advantages of using return loss. And we think of this as return loss. If I go click here and I say, well, this is about four, minus 14 dB, if someone asked me what the return loss was at 4.5 gigahertz, I would say the return loss at 4.5 gigahertz is like uh, maybe it's okay, maybe tw maybe 12 dB. Say I'd say it's 12 dB. It's not minus 12 dB. The return loss is 12 dB. If somebody asked me what the filter passband um, lo loss was, it is 10 dB of, of passband loss. The filter response is 10 dB. The passband loss is mi is minus minus 10 for S21 is the measurement. That means the filter has 10 dB of loss. So you have to be a little bit careful about this, but this is the reason to use return loss. You can put two graphs on the same one axis, and no matter what you think about SimSmith and whether these four axes are ad inadequate or adequate, there's always a time when you need to use all the axes up. And by being able to, to um, get two different um, measurements on, this, on one axis is is a nice thing to do. So to me, that's the main reason for using uh, return loss. Although uh, in the videos I produce, I'm going to continue to use uh, SWR. I have uh, several attenuators that I've purchased that have a little nomen, um, little, num little number performance measurement um, plaque on them, and they always measure uh, the attenuation values, and they always measure return loss. And again, they can plot them on one single graph, and sometimes it's shown in this little on this little plaque. Anyways. That's the, the difference between the two. There really is no difference. They both tell you exactly the same thing. And actually, reflection coefficient tells you the same thing, too. Hope you liked this video. And um, if you have any ideas or suggestions for videos, let me know. Till the next time.